<laughs> Whoops. Hi everyone. Today we have something a little different. Uh, we have a Hungarian quiver. Now the Hungarians, of course, have an extremely proud tradition of horseback archery. And we often talk about other horseback cultures like the Mongols and the Huns and the Turkish, but the Hungarians deserve no less praise. And one of the distinct features of Hungarian archery is this kind of quiver. Uh, it's a box kind of quiver. It is an enclosed wooden quiver. It is made from wood um, and it is very uniquely shaped um, and appropriate for the kind of archery they do. Now, historical sources and illustrations do show this kind of quiver being used in the medieval period to 9th, 10th, 11th centuries um, and you will find people making reproductions of these kinds of quivers. Uh, you'll find several of them on Etsy for example and other stores which sell traditional um, horseback archery equipment, especially Hungarian equipment. Um, I bought this one off a seller on the Eitan Marketplace group on Facebook. Um, so this went straight from Hungary to me. Um, there were several designs, of course, people would customize them very heavily. Some would paint patterns and use different woods. Uh, this one's made from wood with several different um, metal trimmings. So uh, it was a real pleasure to see one of these being sold. And I thought, well, I had to have one of these to see how it worked. Now obviously these don't exactly come with instructions, so it took me a while to figure out um, exactly how these are meant to be worn and used. Um, I, actually, I actually initially thought these were meant to be worn at the back quiver upside down, the points going down, but it's actually a hip quiver, so uh, thankfully I checked that before I uh, wrecked myself. Now most quivers, as you're probably aware, have the arrow pointing downwards. Um, with this hip quiver or back quiver, you hold the arrow by the shaft or the knock, and you pull it, and then you knock and you shoot. These hip quivers have the point going upwards. Now why do this? Well, there are several reasons. Well, firstly, the quiver itself, being a wooden quiver, is extremely sturdy. Again, most quivers you find are made from leather, so they are soft materials. Um, they're advantageous and light. This is a bit heavier, of course, but it's also extremely sturdy. So your arrows are definitely well protected. Um, another good reason is that it does protect the arrows from the elements. Uh, the arrow is enclosed in a box. Um, some of these I've seen have like flaps on top, so you can't close it completely. So you have to consider that historically, um, quivers aren't necessarily made to be extremely fast to use but their primary purpose is to carry and store arrows safely. So having the arrow enclosed in a container like this would definitely preserve it for long campaigns. Additionally, with the feathers being down at the bottom, it's even more protected from uh, water damage. And obviously, having damp fletchings can really affect the flight of the arrow. Another advantage is that you can actually see visibly which arrows you have remaining. So um, think of it like golf clubs in a golf bag. Um, if you have different arrowheads, uh, broadheads, uh, armor piercing heads of different kinds, you can actually choose which one you want to use. Um, I only have one kind of arrow unfortunately and these are modern carbon arrows. But uh, you can imagine, historically, when these would, would have been used, then an archer with different kinds of arrows could actually choose which one to get. Something unique to this kind of design because, again, most uh, quivers have the points facing downward, so it can be kind of hard to see which kind of arrow you're using next. So, uh, with that said, let's try it out. So uh, a few disclaimers. Firstly, I'm aware that I'm not wearing it correctly. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a uh, belt or a rig which allows to wear this in the proper Hungarian style. Um, but hopefully I've positioned it to where it would probably be on the hip uh, as well as on horseback so I can see and feel the arrows. Um, and secondly, as you can probably tell, I'm not exactly Hungarian. Uh, not that it really matters, but um, <laughs> my outfit and my appearance don't really suit what I'm doing right now. But we're having a bit of fun, so uh, we're experimenting. I do, however, have a Hungarian bow. So uh, this is the Imre Nagy uh, Short Hungarian. Uh, this one is 52 pound. So a bit higher than what I normally shoot, but uh, I'm mean to practice with it anyway. And uh, I'm using this as an excuse to uh, squeeze some shots. So uh, let's see if we can make this work. So firstly, can I see the arrows? Of course, they're right in my line of sight, so I'm trying to pick an arrow, uh, then I could take one out. It's easy to take out. Yes, of course. That is extremely smooth and natural, so I think drawing and shooting should be fairly straightforward. Nice, I'll be back a bit just because the tree is in the way.
Okay. First time shooting it. Again, not, not wearing correct, so I'm just the positioning is throwing me off just a bit here. But you position it roughly in your hip area, comes out really smoothly. The fact that you're holding your point first um, doesn't really influence how far you can shoot. In fact, um, that's how most stuff knocking works anyway. You still hold it by the shaft, you still slide it forward. So the same process is used for this kind of quiver. Uh, putting arrows in, I imagine, would be extremely easy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Wrong way. <laughs> uh, whoops, whoops. Uh, old habits die hard, they say. Let's try that again. Let's chuck the arrows in. Might be a few at a time, rather, because you don't want to squash all the feathers. That'd be fine, by the way. The feathers. But uh, there we go. Okay, pretty easy to load. <laughs> Correct way up this time. Unfortunately, my brass ring is a little loose on my finger today. So not going to be as smooth as what I would hope, but I might try a lighter bow later. Whoa, that's a perfect grouping too, by the way. Oh, nice, nice. That actually comes out really nicely. All right, we'll do one more set. This time I'll swap out to a bow I'm a bit more used to, using my 45 pound Turkish bow with the uh, Vilmo Victory thumb ring. Uh, not my best fitting ring, but I'm using it a lot recently. So we'll see if we can get a good rate of fire with a lighter bow. <laughs> it makes such a difference, by the way. <laughs> that makes... That makes such a difference. Again, thumb rings are slipping. Look at summer ring syndrome. Not bad, I uh, struggled a bit there. Again, slippery thumb, a bit sweaty today, plus summer ring syndrome. Uh, but it makes a big difference when you drop 10 pounds, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah that's fun actually so yeah um, hopefully you enjoyed that um, I wish I had a better demonstration rig with a better belt to wear it on but uh, I think it fulfills the function which I thought it would so um, yeah that works really smoothly that was really fascinating to try out um, so hopefully you found it interesting and you enjoyed it as well. Um, let me know your thoughts below. Uh, have you used one of these coolers before? And if you have, what are your experiences with it? Uh, let me know in the comments below. For everybody else, uh, unfortunately I'm not the expert on these kinds of coolers or Hungarian art print in general. So if you drop any questions in the comments, hopefully people have a chance of sharing their experience and knowledge. Anyway, I'm Lee Sensei. Thank you all for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time.